All right, guys. Sorry about that, folks. Apparently, I pressed Y, but it wasn't actually live, unfortunately. Well, with 10 laps in here, we had two yellows already. Jason Brophy started from the pole. I do apologize about that. I'm not quite hey, sure hey, hey. what happened. Yellow's out one more time once again. Yellow on the speedway again. We have a truck around here. Let's see who's around. Looks like the 04 went around. It looks like the 04 Norman underneath of them here. Norman gets tight. Oh, the old four just got loose on the outside. Come across Norman's mode and already in back into the wall for that zero four machine. All right, guys. Once again, I do apologize about that little mishap. Not really sure what caused that. We'll figure that out, but. Currently leading this one, Jason Brophy. He's currently second points. Jason out front, nice looking truck on the evening that UPS paint scheme. And I'm going to step out of the booth here one moment. Alright, if we're back green flag racing up front, the 93 on the bottom, the 88 outside. Now the 88 machine, no falling line, and we got 93.
Down the front, the way they come. Ninety-three starting to step away just a little bit. We're still going. Let's get the picker up for you. All right, out front, Scott. Leading the way of this one. Looks like that number nine machine. He'll drop to the bottom. He'll try to make up. The bottom side work here through three and four. Right up to that left rear quarter panel. Nothing doing yet. Jason able to hold that momentum on that high wind. Good side by side racing here at New Hampshire. Down the front straightaway. 98 on the outside, the nine on the inside. Or the 88, excuse me. On the outside, the nine on the inside. Go from out of corner number two and looks like now we'll clear. Move him up in the position, Jason. I'll fall back to one more spot here on the field. All right, again, up front, Scott is starting to walk away a little bit. And he is there. Right there, Scott pulling away down to a 1.7 second lead. One point eight now ahead. Back there's Ryan running in that fifth position. We got a battle here for fourth. The fifty-seven machine of Jared Ziegler. He'll work underneath Jason there. He'll try to clear him through one and two, and he will make that pass in front of that eighty-eight of his truck. Steps out of line a little bit. Looking there, he has to catch him. Now that 57 now working his way all the way around the bottom of the racetrack. Clears, looks like 88 don't have to run. Jared able to hang on in that front spot, Chevrolet. Or Toyota, that's not Chevrolet, that's a Toyota. Just a little bit there. A little bit of blinking going on out of that. Oh, loose he gets almost in the outside wall. Oh, he held on to that truck by hair. Jason now working the bottom side. There's a 26 now. That's going to be Ryan. Ryan. I think Ryan run down Jason, but. Jason able to hang on to the bottom side to keep the truck nice out ahead of him. As we're 24 laps in, Matt there in that number 24 machine, that can work the team now in the sixth position. Seventh right now is going to be Norman King. Eighth is going to be Jeffrey Sykes. Not Brian Robinson. Kent. Michael right here in the Air Force machine right now in the 10th position. We're already a quarter away through this thing. Or third. Quarter or third. The third, I think. My math is not good. I do not do math very well. Hmm. Thank you, Air Quarter. I was right the first time. Jared now doing everything he can to run down that second place machine. Dylan, they're in the number nine Mountain Dew 
Chevy Silverado. That's with a Mountain Dew truck. Again, Scott Sanderson still leading the way. That number 93. Now with a 2 point, or a 3.2 second lead. We've had three lead changes all the only evening with three cautions for a total of nine laps. Caution, like caution. And it yellows out. I just when I say that, knock on wood, the yellow will fly. We'll go back and take a look at what's happened. May have been the Levi here that ran into some trouble. Take a look and see if it was Levi that may have ran into problem. Don't look like it. Because find where the issue was. It wasn't with Levi. I'm not seeing anything, so I'm not quite sure what the yellow is over. Yeah, we'll just go with it. There was a rabbit on the track. We're just going to go with that. Ninety-three now working his way down Pitt Road. Looks like all the cars now twenty-eight laps in will bring them down to Pitt Road towards our Pitt Road for service. Ninety-three gets his box nice and straight. Eighty-eight in the box of nine having major issues. He looks like he just missed the box, had to turn the truck around, get it straightened in there. It's gonna cost him a lot of time. Yeah, he's all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Let's go, <laughs> I'm not stealing your joke. Hey, sure. <laughs> it's got like go ahead and tell the audience I've been stealing your joke. Okay. Oh, the 93 of Scott Sanderson back out front. As we're 29 laps in to 100, here's the clock. Again, that was a nice little run there. So it build up a little bit of a lead. It's just these trucks are getting so free on these guys on the exit. They're having a really hard time keeping the back of the truck underneath them. So we can get a word with Scott. Right quick here. While we're under yellow. Uh, right. What happened there? What's causing that? Okay. Something's causing that. Alright. Rip. Tonight's going peachy. Yes, I know that. Alright, let's see if we can find him here. Uh, Scott don't look to be in Discord. Yeah. I don't see him in there anywhere. That kind of sucks. racing. Scott on the outside. Alright, the having three on the outside, facing on the inside. He'll be going at it one more time here. Green flag will go back in the air once again for the Camping Universe Truck flag. Series. Green flag is out. Scott will jump out to about a three tenth of a second lead there. Meanwhile, the battle is on there for the second position. 
Jason's going to clear, get out in second now. He's going to stick back to third. Ryan back there in the third position. 24 Matt giving him a challenge. As Matt will go under the nine, Norman slip back there and kick now. Off the restart, that's 24 Matt right up against the nine. He'll make the corner and he will make the pass. The nine tries to cross over. He'll get back underneath of him. Down the back straight away they come. The nine now slide up in front of the four. Oh, so tight right there. The nine clears. Move the nine back up to four. Norman there in sixth position. Matt and Fia. So there's your top. Six through four right there. Right with you there. And now the nine takes it on Ryan in third. Ryan there just trying to hang on to that third position. Got yeah, number 26 machine. You're not missing anything out front of Scott got up to a 3.4 second lead here. Or a 1.34 second lead. Get to there, blind down, just pushed out now 1.4. Scott's definitely pulling away here as a 9 on jump forward to 26. And we'll clear him. Move the 9 up to first. Oh, Jason around. Do you think we should pet or stay out here? Jason spun it around there. He'll get it straightened back out. Go back to the full spot out of it. Just coming off for corner number two. Got the back of the truck. Got real light with him. Spun it completely around. He'll get it straightened back out. Right now, with 64 laps to go, we will see if they come back down pit road again. They've only got about 10 laps on this set of tires. So I wouldn't think that they would come back down here. Never mind, Scott proves me. Nope, he faked him out. Good move by Scott. The 26 does come down. So you got a couple of takers. I think Jared come down along with Norman, they see the Norman there spinning the, the truck around, probably burnt all the tire he had up. So, body down pit road. So now you got a split decision on guys deciding to pit. The six pitted. I don't believe the nine did. I may be wrong, but I don't think the nine hit pit road there. Well, if that's the case, it looks like the six will be the truck with the precious tires. Scott Sanderson out front. The nine of Mr. Dillon right there in second. Mountain Dew Chevy Silverado. Third right now, the six are rolling. He's able to slide his truck up into the top three. Relatively quick race here at New Hampshire, only a hundred miles for these trucks. Out front, the nine there as well, the six and the 24. 39 laps into 100. 
for the Camping Universe Truck Series live on Extreme Sim TV here tonight. Keep in mind, these guys will be off next week for Christmas. As much uh, several other series will be as well, but these guys are off next week uh, for Christmas week, and then they will be back the following week. So, little break coming up for these guys, and they're probably looking forward to it, I would imagine. Gives you time to recharge your battery and get back out of here in a couple of weeks. And if I'm not mistaken, I'll do with the schedule, but I want to say it's Talladega. So, we'll go from this little mile racetrack to 2.5 mile Talladega. Alright, we're doubling back up, getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. Scott there deciding to take that outside line. Again, makes sense here. You want the momentum of the outside to, for that truck to roll the outside, get all the way down the corner here nice and smoothly. I'll jump on the wild pedal once again and bring them back to the third of nine. Nine on the bottom, nine and three on the outside, back in the wild pedal. Nine and three will jump out for a lead now, about three, zero point three. Then you got the 24 of them math. Matt's going to try to dive under the nine. Oh, trouble behind them. He's getting more hard in the end. Dave, Dave, Dave. Looks oh, like her. Ryan might have been involved in that. We'll go back and we'll take a look again. Let's see if Ryan looks his way by this. I just seen a truck in the outside wall. Oh, the 05 in the 57. That's Jared Ziegler involved in that. Oh, just a little contact there. The 26 was sitting hard in that outside fence. A bunch of trucks had to really jump to avoid that. Hard impact there for the 57. Scott Sanderson now leading away in this one. And I'll be right back with you here on Extreme Film.
Be ready, green flag. Go back here and give me a car. Go immediately back out right off the restart. A couple of more trucks involved here. See what happened here. Good on pit road. Looks like the six may have been involved here. Go back and take a look. couple of trucks involved in that one. 31 and the 6. So we had, we've had 7 cars and 23 laps here so far. Alright. 93 back behind the iRacing Ford Mustang pace car once again. Unfortunately, multiple incidents here tonight. The 93 out front. The 9 right there, Dylan right there with him. So we're coming to halfway in this one in a few laps, so time definitely running out for these guys. Let's see if we can get you an interview here right quick. Hey, yeah. hey, Jared, Matt with Extreme Sim, you got copy on me? Uh, yes, I do. All right, I've seen your truck still down on Pitt Road. Do you have any issues out of it? Uh, yeah. Uh, six car. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking, but he just doesn't use the brakes in the corner. That's the second time he slid up in front of me, and I thought, well, just dump him and wreck everybody, or try and cross him over and wreck two or three cars, and... Well, I decided to just try and cross them over. It didn't work out. Um, my required crew says required is almost done, and I still have a lot of optional. So uh, we'll be back out. I uh, just don't know when. I uh, had a fast truck. We drove our way up through a field two to three times there. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. Hope we can get back out to Talladega and. And do a little bit better here. Yeah. Um, next next race is uh, Kentucky. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I thought uh, the was second. Scheduled. Oh well, I think it's Kentucky <laughs> then Dega then. I just remember seeing yeah. Dega and I was like Dega, but no, it's Kentucky next then Dega. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be yeah. back out of Kentucky here in two weeks. So. Yeah. Um. Hopefully everybody has a, a great uh, Christmas break or have a great holidays. But uh, yeah, it sucks. We had a fast car and uh, green, green, got green, a green, race green. ruined there. And uh, yep, it happens, man. Hey, same thing happened to us last week. So uh, there's a chase here. That's what's for. So hopefully we can uh, 
get some momentum heading into the chase later on in the season and uh, go from there, get a chance at championship. First step, right, well, we do wish you luck going in next season. We'll see you then, buddy. Yep, thank you. All right, again, that was Jared Diggler. They were driving the he went around as we were we are now back to the flag racing here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Out front, Scott Sanderson back out to a pretty good size lead here. And I'm sorry about the stutter every now and then. I was having his actual kiss. Always so we're just gonna try to work our way through it. Going there in the nine, trying to close in on the ninety-three with forty-six laps from or forty-eight laps remaining. Ryan back here in third, fourth, and four. Fifth is Jason there in the 88. Jason goes to the bottom of the track. He'll look from the low side on that 24 machine. Norman right there as well. At least three battling hard for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Look at Jason diving down in there, really trying to, to get position there on the twenty four. Look how to get that right front right up to that right front of this truck to the left here of Jason for a bat try to kind of move him up a little bit. Looks like Jason lost a lot of momentum there though. Small so allow Norman to try to go roll on him. He'll work it back out. He was back on the front straight away. Fifty six laps, forty forty five laps remain. Here tonight. Dylan now 1.3 off the leader Scott. Scott up there all by himself. Brian back here as well. We'll go back and take a look back at Norman Jason Matt still going at it. That 88 machine really trying to get up the map from the rear deck. Try to maybe get Positioning on him. Nothing else can maybe move him up out of the way just a little bit. Coming to 44 to go. Matt really got free off that corner. Like Jason trying to get the momentum to get right around him here. Jason now back on the bottom. He'll draw even with them coming down the front straight away. If he can hang on here, he might be able to clear him in 22. No diving in there deep, we'll see. Matt really using the high side. Looks like that's going to let Jason squeeze through. And Norman's going to fall through and Matt's going to hit, hit the wall there. He got up a little too high, lost all his grip. Kind of bounced the truck into the fence a little bit. Scott's still up front with a 1.7 second lead here. Fifty-nine laps remaining or er, forty-two laps remaining of this one. Ryan there in the twenty-six machine riding along in the third position. Michael here in the airport, so he's still riding along back here. Levi there in the 31, currently running by. Oh, Norman King right here, boy, the 31. What happened to him? He wasn't running up there with Jason. 
We'll go back and take a look. Take a look here. It looks like Norman just comes around, gets it into that wall. And then the yellow came out for another driver here. Not sure what the yellow was for there, but. Oh, the six lost it here. So we had multiple trucks lose it on the exit of two there. Now, cars going on pit road. Looks like Scott's still on the racetrack. We got multiple cars coming down pit road. All right. All right, looks like Scott will now bring his truck down. with the nine with him as well. Get ready to go back green flag racing to get the one to go here. But 36 laps remaining, that means they'll take the green. But 35 more laps around New Hampshire to go. Keep in mind, Extreme Sound TV will be back in action next Tuesday night. with the Roaring Thunder National Series, I believe will be the next one up on deck for us. No racing this Sunday, so. All right, last out of the night of the race, we'll be back to shooting flag racing this time by. Ford Mustang Baseball down down Pitt Road, leaving the field in Green the hands of Scott. Green in the air, they're all going to pack up here. Brian with a good move on the outside. Move Brian to the lead now, three wide for the lead with the nine on the bottom. Everybody holding their line, Brian going way out. He'll stay out of the way. That'll leave Scott back up to the lead. With 35 left remaining in this.
Ryan right there behind him. And it, The nine right there underneath the eight eight. They're battling now for the third position. Don't fall back on there and nine slide back in behind Jason. 33 laps remaining here. Jason now just trying to hang on to a third position. Right now with a seven tenth of a second lead to nine, that's he's going to drive it back to the bottom one more time. He'll be dealing with the nine if he gets three down there and got down. He'll try to ride up behind Jason in the one more time. Side again, getting free underneath the Jason. Doing everything you can to hold it down there. He'll draw even with him. He'll head off in the three and four. Down right there on the bottom. to go here, the nine's still on the bottom, still working to get 588. 29 now to go. So Dylan wants to get by and try to go catch Ryan. He's going to find a way to make sure it works a day for start happening. Oh, look at the nine get really sweet off the floor there as the face truck up the racetrack. Coming to 28 now to go. Everybody trying to settle into a groove here. Shot up front all by himself. Now with a 1.1 second speed. Jason back here with nine back here as well. Michael back here in the 05, right front back here in the 04. Oh, look at that, nearly making contact as he through. After that eight yellow many he laps here. So far this evening he's gonna move over and let Matt go. That's gonna move Matt up to the fifth position. Once Matt clears him, which he does. Now the old boy gets his side go over the back of Michael again. Michael is starting to move track to this here. And move the 05 up to six. From the 04 up to 6, the 05 back to 7. 25 to go. Scott now with a 1.2 second lead. Scott doing a good job here just standing on. Had a nice smooth ride so far tonight. Scott had led 75 or, or 60 laps out of the 75 that's been being complete. 
So I dominate the warm up here out of the nine three machine. Ryan running as well, Jason, Dylan. Dylan now still trying to close back in on the 88 of Jason. As we collapse the kick and die here. Now the 23 remaining. Sucks to have damage like that. You can't get any speed out of the truck. 93 up to a 1.7 second gap now. Which is coming to a 20 to go. Ryan now coming under fire of the, of the 88. Did the 88 can work his way around the 26 here. Coming to 20 laps to go. If Jason can get by the 26, I think he may get, he may get something out of the leader there. If he can get clear of him here, he'll drop to the bottom. I think Ryan's going to let him go and he will. Now Jason's got quite a gap up to the leader. About one second gap there to the leader. Now two seconds. So we'll see if Jason's able to run him down now. Track. He's gotten by the 26. We'll see over the next several laps if the 88's got anything to go catch the 93 machine with. 18 to go here. We're going to look at his last lap time. He's about a hint off the leader that last time by. So. Got to get a little bit more speed if he's going to go back. Oh, now Jason gets by the way. All the way to the three. Got the truck all out of shape. He's able to hang on to it. 18 laps remaining in this one now. Ryan here as well. Now the nine three-way battle for second. Scott Sanderson he had a really good run all night long, coming to 16 to go. on the racetrack trying to use all the momentum again. He's got the nine under the cover. Looks like that truck starts to go. And the nine will try to slide by here. Jason now with a clear bit of track, and I don't know if he's got time to run down the spot. Dylan back here, Ryan back here as well. Matt back here in the 24. 
Jeff Sykes and the 04 with some damage. The 05 of Michael trying to get back on deck. Back here and not be by intent for that 31. Brian back here in the 37. Meanwhile, back up front, Scott still leading the way now with 2.6 seconds. Now 2.7 with 12 to go. Jason doing a good job just trying to maintain abs with him. Going there. Ryan back here in the 26th. <laughs> As we're headed towards the 11 laps to go here. Not much time at all around New Hampshire. 11 miles of racing remains. on 10 to go here for Scott. Twenty six right here as well. O five and O four is still gonna add it. Closest battle right now on the racetrack between these two. Uh, and yellow is out on the speedway. Man, tell me what you got. I'm not sure here what has happened. To bring out the yellow. With nine laps to go, the yellow has come out. It might have been for Hart here. Let's go back and see if it was for indeed Hart. I'm not sure. Looks like he just blew a motor there. And. Yeah, I bet he's going to come to a stop, and that's going to bring out the yellow flag on the front straightaway. That may be what done it. All right. Scott, now your leader. Norman, or Jason, broke in second. Eight to go. We'll see if anybody decides to hit here. Jason dives down pit road away. So now Jason has took it down pit road. He's gonna have fresh tires and 26 days out. So this could be very interesting depending on where the 88 lines back up at. He'll have fresher tires. Go. 04, Jeffrey, he's gonna get a little bit of a better jump on that road. That's gonna put Jason, oh, Jeffrey Nero there. Alright. So we're gonna have a little bit of a shootout here at New Hampshire. 10 to 93, hang on, he's got older tires. Looks like Jason's gonna be on the outside line on the restart. The 04 on the bottom, both those trucks are fresh tires. 
with six laps to go. Looks like life is still on the pace car for we'll be five or less to go here. Scott's had a really good run all night. It's going to come down to getting more off with the tires that he does have. see who can hang on here at New Hampshire to get this win. Can Scott do it? I bet you he was hoping more trucks stayed out with him, but that just wasn't the case this time. Coming to five to go now, the lights will go off, should go off this time. So we'll get green with four laps to go. Jeffrey on the bottom, uh, Jason on the top, both of those trucks are tired. You don't have to watch your wheel spin here on the restart. Being up front on uh, hot tires really easy to spin them and really just cause all kinds of mayhem. Got to be a little bit nervous with those older tires. be interesting to see here if he can hang on. Alright, we're coming to green. For the Camping Universe Truck Series, we'll have four to go here at New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Green is way to it. Green's out. Green flag, green flag. Oh, look at Scott really jumping on the wild paddle. That's going to put him out to a decent lead. Look at Jason immediately to the bottom of the line. He'll be up to tie the 93 as the 26 gets sideways. It's a battle hole down the back straightaway. Caution. And Yellow's out. Who was in the lead? I'll leave it behind you if you want to stay out. I think Scott was in the lead. With four to go, I don't think we'll go back to Green Flag Racing. We're going to go back and take a look. All right, we'll take a look here at what happened here to bring the yellow out again. Oh, we got the 26 gets tagged by the 04. He gets loose. Back up into the 05. The 28 involved. The 05 hardened the wall. He ends up on his side. Well, that brought out the yellow. The 88 had fresher tires, but I'm not sure at the time of caution, I believe the 93 was ahead. No gun but two to go here. We're not gonna get a restart. So it's like this one will end under yellow here tonight. Two to go, a lot still on, on the pace bar. So indeed this one will end under yellow here. The race coming to an end with yellows out. We've had five changes on the we changes on the evening. It's gonna to be totaled up to ten cautions for thirty-four laps. White still out on the iRacing pace car. We'll see the white flag this time by. As long as Scott can just keep that truck rolling, he's gonna walk away with the win here this evening. Once again, it's been the Camping Universe Truck Series here on Extreme Sim TV. It's been an interesting race all night long. Unfortunately, it's going to come to an end under yellow. Alright, white flag will wave this time by. Scott will see the yellow and white wave together. One lap to go here on Extreme Film TV for the Camping Hero Burst Truck Series, and they'll finish it out under yellow. 
Scott with a good run all night long and led. He'll end up leading 84 of 100 laps here tonight. Jason Brophy will be scored in second. Um, he'll have Dylan back here in third in that number nine. I finished for him bringing it home in third tonight. All right, we'll come around and we'll see the checkered flag and we will get your interview with your top three fifties. Checkered flag is waving in the air for Scott this time by. You'll see the checkered. Here it is, Scott Sanderson. He'll walk away with the win here tonight. At All right, we will. Be right back with your interviews momentarily. Hello? Hello? Sorry. Uh, no, he may not have been in here. Oh. There's quite the argument going on right now. Holy cow. Ah, uh, well, let's save that. All right, guys, we're back here with your winner on the night, Scott Sanderson. Hey, Scott, you got a copy on me tonight, bud? Okay. Yeah, I got you. All righty, buddy. You walked away. You got away. I think it was 80-some on the last you laid out of 100 tonight. Really good truck here this evening. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I really did not have the best week last week, so I kind of needed a redemption week. I uh I gotta apologize to Jared. I kind of went off on him last week after how that setup felt. That was probably the worst run I've had in a long time, and he he kind of agreed with the setup being too tight and came back this week. And it, I mean that setup was spot on. That was a uh, that was a great setup. It uh, New Hampshire is one of my better tracks too, but uh, yeah, that setup you could just you could basically throw that truck anywhere as long as you had the throttle control on it, and it it, it would hook up and it would take off. So, I got uh, I got lucky there at the end though. Jared was or uh, Jason was coming for me there on that quick restart, and I I was kind of hoping it was going to be a quick caution the way the the first half of that race went. Yeah, Jason definitely had the tires there. It looked like it was going to be a battle at the end of that yellow flu there. So, what do you think caused most of the yellows here tonight? It was definitely a yellow field night. Yeah, I I think it was the setup and people just not being patient with the tires and. Honestly, I don't think a lot of them were running the, the proper line. The bottom two grooves, even in practice, I was just slipping and sliding all over the place. It just doesn't have that same banking to it as what that third groove does. And I was noticing if you could keep it up above that uh, seam and keep it in the third groove, you, would, uh, you wouldn't get it as loose as often. You'd still have to do a little throttle control, but if you could keep the whole corner above that third, that final seam, it was just it was going to be golden. <coughs> All righty, buddy. Well, congratulations on your win tonight. Is anybody you'd like to thank there? See, that's the uh, – hi, Scott. I'm in here. <laughs> oh, um, yes, you are. 
<laughs> so that's the difference is when I pre this weather right here, you could run that inside line. No problem. It was the fact that it was way warmer. And so that's why I was struggling at the beginning of the race because I just ran this line. I didn't run the high line because there was enough grip to run down low in cooler weather. The problem is I came into the session and uh, it wasn't cool. Whoops. Yeah, and that's that's one thing I try not to do is it's kind of backwards, but I try not to practice in anything else other than what we are going to run in that the final room that we just were in, just to stop the uh, the differences in it because of how how much of a variety i racing has now in weather and all that. Uh, I just choose not to get used to one thing and then have it thrown at me a different way and then have to relearn it anyway. So. Well, and in this case, though, so it helped me at the end of the race, although I should have died somewhere in the middle of that race. I missed <laughs> two wrecks, and I'm still not sure how I'm... Also lost it myself, but that was because I kept having to remind myself, no, he's faster. Don't try and chase him down. You're just going to spin him. He's faster. <laughs> so, and I literally, in that last 20 laps, I almost lost it once. I'm like, no, just, just run. You're not going to catch him. And then I moved down to the bottom because I knew I was most comfortable down there. Not bottom, but... Um, but yeah, I tried to mock your line, and I kept trying. I'm like, I can't figure it out. What is it? Yeah, just... it, it was it was definitely a fine line because if you got up in there into that fourth groove where the dark where the asphalt really changed color, it it was just you were gonna slide forever, and nothing was gonna hook up front tires, rear tires. You were just gonna go, you were just yeah, gonna go straight to the wall. And in in three and four, I noticed you were pretty consistently. You'd come in. L l lower but slide out past the line and out into the dark but then you'd almost be checking up and cutting back in and i just couldn't get that line down i'd over i'd over slide it like you said i think you were already in control before you went out there it was just setting up the rest of the corner it seemed but i'm happy that the tires i was in second either way i, I accepted second so i'm happy to get second <laughs> i was really hoping because all of a sudden it just it opened up <laughs> Yeah, and that's where it would have bit me from not practicing, too, is because I, in practice, I ran, like, the first two laps down low, and I was like, oh, this ain't going to work, so I moved up the track, and yeah. if that inside groove would have came in, I would have been a sitting duck, and you would have flown around me. Well, and on the fresh tires, I think, it's because, I, on older tires, it got less slick. On fresh tires, I noticed, even for the first about eight to ten laps of the run, you had issues with your with sliding, especially in, in about 100 degree weather, it seemed like, but as it started to cool, or as you started to get laps on tires, as weird as it sounds, because you couldn't carry in so much speed and pick up throttles early, yeah, you couldn't, you, you were less loose off, too, so, but, I, as I said, you were the class field, and that move you put on me, it, you completely psyched me out. <laughs> I went into I, that corner, Mike, oh no, what have I done? I will... I will be completely honest. I had full intentions. You're talking about the one early in the race, right? Oh, yeah. Early in the race, yeah. we took the lead from me. I don't know. I had full intentions on giving you a bumper and just moving you up. I wasn't going to wreck you. That's never my intention. But just giving you a bumper because I knew I was faster. I knew track position was going to be a a big thing with how, how the cautions were going so early on. And I was yeah. like, all right, I need to do something here. <laughs> yeah. And the moment the moment you did that, I was out of it. I. I couldn't drive at the beginning of the race at all. I started sliding back. I fell back. Finally, I started to sort it out again, but it was it, then the runs ended, and then anyway, I spun and almost died. But yeah, that was a really good race on your part, and I did. I expected the bumper, and that's what psyched me out. He because you touched me a little bit in the straight. I'm like, oh god, he's gonna bump me here, and I'm like <laughs> sending it, and then I realized, oh no, my braking marker was way Sent back it there. too far. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm out of the groove, and then yeah, after that, it just it threw me off, and I couldn't anyway. So I'm glad I I'm happy I rallied to second. That's a lot of fun though. Yeah, it, uh, New Hampshire always seems to put on a decent show. There seems to be too much caution activities going on, as in at, at the end of the race, there are people arguing and and stuff. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, that's quite the argument. So yeah, yeah, he gets people. Well, I mean it's pretty close it's close thing to a short track we've run so far so yeah not necessarily too big of a surprise but so see i love the kentucky setup that's where we differed i loved it or er, kentucky uh, that's next auto race. club i'm i'm not i don't have the setup i swear uh yeah auto club see i yeah. figured that one out real quick from the moment yeah, you i ran away with truck auto on club. that I, from yeah. the moment i hopped in the truck on that one i was fast and i knew how to drive it and, yeah uh, I know you, you popped the wall early in that race, and I knew the moment you popped the wall, that was because after what happened at Charlotte, like, I was terrified of touching the right front anywhere, ever, other than here. See, here it would have been okay. Yeah, and, and the damage that I got from just 
ever so slightly tapping that wall. It barely even scrubbed any speed with how light I tapped it, but it wrinkled yeah. that fender enough. I was able Damn to get it. it fixed, but it just it seemed like it would not turn. I was chattering oh. the right front tire, just sliding up to the wall. The thing wouldn't turn. I, was, I went even down onto the apron at one point to try to get the yep. thing to turn, <laughs> and it was just nothing. And I, yeah. oh, I was I was about as angry as what the two were at the end of this race. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> yeah, no. When uh when I did that in Charlotte, we we had a little bit of contact there when I got under you. Nothing, you know, just. But it crinkled my fender. But the rest of that run, I sat there, going, "What in the world is wrong? Did I just completely forget how to drive this track? Like I couldn't drive it at all. I was three tenths, four tenths, five tenths slower, and you'd never know it." But I just got a little crease right at the top of that fender, enough that I had no air left on the right front, and it was gone. Just nothing. Yeah. And so that's why I knew the moment you touched the wall, and then with you, it, that's what it was. I mean, the setup was... It, it started out a little tight, but it loosened up as the run went on. But the moment you creased the fender, I guarantee that it, it ruined the setup. Oh, yeah. Because and you couldn't... and and. Even even before I touched the wall there, the thing, it was not loosening up for me. I don't know. Auto Club's not one of my best tracks. <laughs> but yeah. It uh, was, yeah, and it, it was so just, you, I must have been running the wrong line or something. You had to stay off the throttle quite a while, roll it through. Anyway, I had, it, it, ran, like, it ran like the Indy car. That's the other thing that fit and vanished me. But then you'd use the right, the, the throttle to get the truck to rotate. And toward the end of the run, I'd start to get sideways coming off the corners. And that's what, because you'd start to burn that right rear up. And so that's where I was running into issues. Yeah. Was toward the end of the run, I think we had a caution come out and I was about to pit because I nearly lost it off the corner. I don't know, maybe we pitted under, I don't even remember. But no, I think we had a caution come out and I was getting ready to pit because I'd lost, or I'd nearly lost it off the corner. But yeah, so this track, this was a lot of fun. I mean, I, I was a little annoyed at the beginning of the race because I practiced wrong. And I should have done it. I didn't do a session that was over 100. The, like, this is 117th to start. I think I targeted mine more toward the later in the day, uh, rather than a little later, more like this, rather than when we were, we were going to run. So Yeah. But, no, it was a lot of fun, and I think there was a real clean racing up front. Uh, obviously, some people, Ryan and Jeffrey, might disagree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I had a lot of fun up there, and, I, you know, that was... I knew the moment you got around me, it was over. So I don't know how. I think what happened, the only reason I got the poles is because the track cooled down. And I put down a decent. I told Norman, oh, that lap felt okay. And then I looked down, oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, I was like, all right, I laid down a five. Not bad. Okay, that should be good enough for a pole. Nobody else ran a five in practice. And then you come in here, just guns a blazing, run a four. I'm like, this sandbagger. What? Yeah, I wish I could say that, but no, no, I drove <laughs> off into that corner, and and it wanted to. I thought I butchered it, kind of. You know, I didn't think it was good. I, I went low, and it didn't feel like it was very fast, and then I didn't carry the speed off, and I know what you were going to practice, and so I, I kind of came down into the next corner, and I ran the high line, and I felt like I got three and four pretty good, but I come down the front stretch, and I'm like, oh, that's an okay lap, and then I look at that time, <laughs> so and I'm like, oh. Okay, and I just sat there and laughed because I knew that two things. One, I, I wasn't going to be able to hold it for 100 laps. I wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> not not with the way that everything was driving, but two, and then I saw the t track temp drop a degree, and I knew that that was the cause. So, yeah, yeah. You I definitely had like... me beat there at the end of the race with those, with the, not just the fresh tires, but even just the, the practice in the cooler tires. Eh. Yeah, but I, I think you'd have still been fine. Like, I don't think I could have necessarily even completed the pass if we were on even tires. And so I'm I'm always fine with you deserve that race win. I don't feel – I'm not disappointed at all finishing second in this one because you were, you were hands down the fastest on that race. Nice win. And yeah, I'll uh, see you in two weeks in Kentucky. All right, I'll be there. Yep. Good job to the both of you there. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you, Matt. No problem, bud. All right, guys. We're going to go through the race results. And we will get out of here for the evening. So. All right. All, your winner on the even with Scott. Jason came in second. Third went to Dylan. Fourth to Matt. Fifth to Jeffrey. Sixth to Brian. Seventh to Levi. Eighth to Ryan. Ninth went to Norman. Tenth went to Michael. That was your top ten on the evening. Let's grab our 
Patrol Band. All right. And 11th was Hurt Green. 12th was Roy. 13th was Jared. And 14th was Brian. Well, guys, that's been the Camping Universe Truck Series live from New Hampshire. We'll see you back here next Tuesday. No, I think we're off next Tuesday. Hang on. I'll, I'll put a video up when the next race is going to be because it's the holidays and everything's about to get a little crazy. So, I think I may be off most of next week. So, until I see you again, have a good one and uh, have a great night.